पी करने के बाद में बहुत सारे लोग पोस्ट जॉक का रास्ता इख्तियार करते हैं इधर इन यू और यूरोप और जैसे कि मैं यूरोप के अंदर हूँ लेकिन मेरे सीनियर हैं एक डॉक्टर त्यागराजन जिन्होंने सी एम लेयर ग्रुप यहाँ पे जर्मनी के अंदर है वहाँ पे पोस्ट जॉक किया फॉर फाइव ईयर्स एंड देन उनके बाद में वहाँ पर उन्होंने इंडस्ट्री के अंदर ट्रांजेक्शन किया द नेम ऑफ द कंपनी इज़ बायटेक शायद आपने इस कंपनी का नाम सुना होगा फाइजर बायटेक कंपनी की कोविड वैक्सीन आई थी तो उसमें उन्होंने ट्रांजेक्शन किया तो किस तरह से ट्रांजिशन करते हैं उससे बेहतर कौन बता सकता है जो कि उन्होंने खुद ने ट्रांजिशन किया है सो फॉर्चुनेटली आई एम इन जर्मनी इन माइंस द हेड क्वार्टर और मेरे साथ में है डॉक्टर त्यागराजन सो आई वेलकम यू ऑन माय चैनल डॉक्टर त्यागराजन थैंक यू थैंक यू प्रियंक फॉर वेलकमिंग मी ऑल्सो लाइक वेलकम टू माइंड थैंक यू फॉर होस्टिंग मी हेयर सो डॉक्टर त्यागराजन प्रोबेबली आई एंड माई ऑडियंस वुड लाइक टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट वॉट टिप्स और वॉट रिकमेंडेशन वुड यू लाइक टू गिव टू द पीपल हु आर ऑलरेडी डूइंग पोस्ट जॉक समवेयर इन यूरोप एंड दे माइट बी इंटरेस्टेड इन गोइंग टू सम बायोटेक फॉर्म बायोटेक कंपनी मे बी स्टार्टअप मे बी द बिग बिग जैंट लाइक योर्स सो वॉट डू यू थिंक हाउ कैन वन यू नो गो इन टू द इंडस्ट्रियल स्पेस yeah it's like uh, it is also like uh, you should have a preset mind that uh, before one or two years before applying the industry job mm -hmm. like uh, this is what is suitable for you mm -hmm. and the thing is like uh, the companies in europe is like they are very focused mm -hmm. uh, for example my company is like they are focused on this nano delivery mm -hmm. and now they are expanding slowly into other areas but uh, also like similar like uh, where you come from the nai mostly is like immunology background and protein purification yeah some companies in europe like our startups they are uh, focus on this one mm -hmm. but they don't do like uh, the research uh, as intensive like what you do okay so it's like they are focus in a very limited area and for for specific process okay uh, the upgradation of some process okay so you should like uh, accept this and you should like you should not find like uh, too many scientific challenges in a in a industrial job mm -hmm. instead you will find like a refinement of some scientific uh, okay. task so okay. so that the company benefits and the product quality improves okay so keeping in this mind like uh, you don't find that much scientific challenge in industry mm -hmm. but you will find the challenges to like what is say uh, to make it like the product commercialized okay so for that you need to put lot of effort mm -hmm. which is not like which is which will not bring you paper mm -hmm. but it may in future it may uh, bring some patents okay so you have to keep this in mind and uh, then only you, you are you should be ready to come to industry okay so uh, and and like uh, what could be the pathways like uh, for for post doc we know there could be like nature career or some urex something yeah. this kind of thing so are there any any particular kind of pathway through which we can easily enter or something yeah, really there are some sites actually mm -hmm. there are some sites called europe jobs and as well as what i i went through is like linkedin mm -hmm. as well as companies personal website it is recommended like you can apply within the period any time but it is preferable to apply within uh, one day within one day you have the advertisement and and what what do you think like is it necessary to have some kind of connection already within the particular company of interest or some kind of external recommendation of a professor is it required or is it like desirable from company people or does it really uh, it matter it is not like that that much stringent like academic job one thing is like uh, they should know about uh, your university and your university degree Mm -hmm. and maybe like some common connection is there I mean that is beneficial but doesn't that doesn't bring you job actually mm -hmm. one thing is like uh, they should be familiarized with what your area mm -hmm. your degree mm -hmm. and maybe like your previous experience mm -hmm. that should bring you job like uh, rather than the only connection okay so, but connection might give you a, a, an extra edge probably the connection might might tell you that uh, how good you are university uh -huh. and uh, what do you say like uh, how familiar they are with that university people already if already somebody is there from the same institute uh -huh. and if they are not making much problem then they are happy to take you yeah so, so they have basically set the credibility uh -huh. already in the yeah. company so they have, and also like when they go for someone very new uh -huh. they have to see like their background and they have to invest lot of time on it Mm -hmm. So it is like unless you are very exceptional candidate mm -hmm. uh, it is not going to bring anything easily but if you are like normally like a uh, like uh, if your profile is quite decent and you already some known person is working in the company mm -hmm. they just check like uh, how good the degree and how good the your uh, credibility and the second thing is like uh, uh, how good uh, what is it Uh, your experience that matters like whether this experience brings some value to the company mm -hmm. that imp that is very important than the simple credibility 
like uh, maybe like you are working at some protein engineering yeah and uh, maybe publish one or two papers uh -huh. but that is sufficient having someone wo who worked in some organic chemistry which uh, 20 papers mm -hmm. and which the company is not interested to do any research on this mm -hmm. uh, the company's focus is protein means they will take the person with only two papers or one paper mm. with a protein experience practical experience so basically the requirement of the job is also job something is, yeah. that matters so whether you have the yeah, yeah okay. it, i also faced the similar situation like uh, where previously i applied like with i have lot of publication like around 20 uh -huh. but uh, that time the company's need is not my profile okay so whenever the need arises they take me uh. so it's not like uh, they take uh, the person with the highest qualification uh -huh. it's also like based on the need they take okay okay so that makes sense and uh, i just have another query like like i i'm doing postdoc in czech republic so let's say if i want to change the country and i want to go in other part of european union country does it impact the uh, the selection criteria that they would be interested the german company would be interested more in german people living in german or let's say the indians who are already doing postdoc in germany than the one who is doing in czech republic or austria or uh, switzerland does it impact anyway basically it is not actually it, is, it doesn't impact anything uh, in such uh, uh, such level and the thing is like uh, they just see like uh, whether this guy is suitable mm -hmm. and they try to bring him as soon as possible to the company mm -hmm. so that uh, it is also preferable that if you are already in germany or if you are already in europe it is easy for us to like uh, make the visa process quickly okay but uh, if you uh, are sitting in Indi india mm -hmm. and trying to apply it is a long process for you mm -hmm. so i don't know like whether the company needs a person immediately in one or two months mm. in that case they have to take a decision to ta take someone from europe mm. so otherwise uh, there is no para, like other uh, like there is no specific reason that uh, to reject someone who is doing postdoc from other other part of europe or india mm -hmm. it's like it's only the matter of like logistic Okay. Like, uh, where, like, where, how can, how fast things can be done? Ah. So if it is, if there is a flexibility, like, uh, of the project, like, where they can bring you in six months or one year, mm. then they can take a chance to bring from other country or somewhere. Mm. That doesn't. That I think that doesn't have any direct influence on application process. Oh. I mean I'm, I'm spared then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So on that note only I would also like to ask whether there we could expect like could you name any of some any of biotech companies which are there in uh, in Europe maybe in Germany or other part of the Europe that yeah, you could name. Yeah, one thing is like my company BioNTech is there. Mm -hmm. Otherwise most of the biotech based startups are there in Heidelberg mm -hmm. where you can look for some protein related work or DNA related works. Mm -hmm. and some many companies are there in belgium mm -hmm. where they work on dna products and uh, some companies are there in amsterdam their headquarters mm -hmm. uh, especially like johnson and johnson is there mm -hmm. as well as the elsevier headquarters is there like uh, where you can like um, um, look for editorial job mm -hmm. and also switzerland has all the pharma companies yeah, like novartis yeah. and these companies yeah, 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 like yeah. Uh, and uh, in in near frankfurt region uh, merck is there that is m full of chemical company mm -hmm. so yeah uh, in and around frankfurt there are many companies mm -hmm. and by in berlin around berlin there are some small companies and startups mm. berlin is known for its startups okay so you can find some startup jobs it's also like uh, like um, up to you that whether you want to start with a startup or you want to start with a big company mm. so so that in big companies like uh, this is the growth will be like uh, it's a step by step by and limited mm. and a startups like maybe you can if everything is going well mm. things can come mm. up soon mm. so it's up to you to decide like uh, which kind of company you want to choose mm. so these are some options other than that like uh, as you as i oh, said or sometimes the beggars can't be choosers <laughs> no, no, no no maybe like uh, <laughs> this, uh, <laughs> that should not be the case actually <laughs> mm. okay mm. Uh, and uh, uh, another another query which i personally had is like uh, for example if somebody is passed out uh, as a psc student let's say whether it is from india or from any european university and uh, let's say he is uh, offered the salary x and eventually let's say you have done your postdoc and now you are there as a scientist so now they do they consider your five year postdoctoral experience in europe and do they provide you some like 1.5x salary or 2x salary 
or it is again accelerate only like as good as you no. know phd student fresh yeah. officially i am not able to disclose my salary uh, yeah yeah so you should not is, <laughs> but the thing is uh, they do consider your experience mm -hmm. and your value like uh, based on that the salary will be like uh, given mm -hmm. uh, for a scientist there is a salary uh, like a, like a, the salary salary band actually mm -hmm. so they just put you maybe in the top if you are well experienced mm. so the so that you are in a, like a well ahead of uh, the freshers and so you don't need to worry about that mm. and uh, yeah and also like it's also about your family situation like if you are married your salary is 10% extra after oh. tax okay. so the benefits are like comes according to your need and uh, so less according to your experience so ah. that is not a big deal when you men you are looking for a job especially in germany mm. uh, i think the it is similar case in europe mm -hmm. but uh, for germany i'm sure that salary like negotiation is not that, that big problem and learning the language of uh, german uh, is something important for getting a job in germany or let's say in other part of europe for example yeah of course like uh, this uh, like uh, our in our company there are some projects which require german knowledge because we have to communicate with the uh, local operator okay for that you need german language mm -hmm. otherwise uh, in general as a scientist like uh, you can go with english only okay. but uh, if you have if you learn german officially like like it can it can be useful in mm -hmm. some meetings like where some meetings will happen only in german mm -hmm. that time it will fetch you some advantage so that you can be like uh, in the part of that meeting mm. uh, equally mm -hmm. otherwise you have to always need a translator and you will mm. get everything all the information bit later yes so yes so it's yes. a good it's good to learn german like uh, when you if you want to climb up to the ladder mm -hmm. otherwise like uh, the experience will bring you the Uh, and, and and let's say like a phd a phd or post doctoral experience let's say somebody has done a basic science and most mm. often than not uh, in any uh, in any company like mm. biotech company most often translational science is going on so mm. do they also prefer or give certain hike in uh, salary when they are hiring someone who has done uh, translational research in their phd or in post doc something like that or uh, it doesn't matter on the salary negotiation eventually uh it doesn't matter on salary negotiation but uh, like one thing i want to mention here is like uh when someone who has done basic science there are like uh, they will be put into full r&d mm -hmm. where you have to like may be present in the lab a lot mm -hmm. but someone who has done translation research they are like uh, they are in the like maybe the production level or in the late stage level of the mm. search mm. so where that like uh, their labor work will be like very less mm. so very less i wouldn't say very less it's like it's like a minimal i would say like compared to the um, someone who has done actual biological research okay like with animal testing uh -huh. so for animal testing you must uh, like uh, stay from 6 to evening 6 mm -hmm. and that time or uh, 6 to evening 4 like uh, with a limited time like german law which allows only 10 hours mm -hmm. per day mm -hmm. so considering all these factors uh, like uh, you have to balance your time mm -hmm. but otherwise like uh, when you are with bioinformatics or some other job mm -hmm. so this time restriction is not there okay. so it is also like uh, depending on the work and not based on the like what is a your qualification or the field where you are qualified mm. yeah it's up to you like maybe someone who has done physics or chemistry mm. they must be needed in the like let stage research mm. and that person may not need to spend much time like mm. uh, as someone who is working in the clinical research where they mm. have to go with animals and they have to start the work in early morning so that animals can be like a sacrifice around 10 or 12 yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, like they can we cannot waste the sample mm. as soon as the sacrifice happens mm. so we have to consider at that time like uh, to save the sample mm. rather than thinking too much about the time mm. okay cool so uh, how is life in general uh, like what uh, in general would you like to say about life in academia because you must be having long experience of academia and now it's i understand it's just new you have just joined recently so do you feel any difference or cultural shock or climate shock anything like that yes yes as you say there is a, there is some cultural shock than like uh, academy uh -huh. uh, it's not there Uh, one thing is like here in industry what we do is like everything step by step mm -hmm. with full documentation and approval mm. with, uh, and reviewing mm. after that only we'll start the work ah, okay. in academics it's like we start the work uh, and then do the recommendation the result, <laughs> then documentation then mm. review uh, then yeah. we'll find the results like here 
there is no like uh, there is no second chance in industry possibly mm-hmm. like mostly like we document review then mm. once we decide like this experiment is essential then we'll do mm-hmm. then we'll get the right results mm. so that is restricted mm. uh, okay so that's how it is mm. so uh, i and my audience basically thank you for uh, your time and all your efforts to explain us what is what happens in the industry and how to be there and uh, we all wish you the pleasant and successful journey ahead career ahead so thank you very much uh, dr tyagrajan once again for joining us and uh, enlightening us thank you priyank for coming because <laughs> your stay is like a, it's like a it's a refreshment for us after one month of uh, like uh, setting up the house <laughs> so thank you for coming thank you thank you for hosting me and i must say your house is beautiful oh, <laughs> <thank> you. <laughs> you will okay. get to see the house very short tour mm. so you will get to see that thank you all okay thank you everyone and uh, enough for today my name is priyank and his name was dr tyagrajan i think you can find his uh, linkedin id below in the description and yes. you can connect if you have more questions and you can join him so enough for today uh, we will talk again jai vigyan yeah <laughs> why did you laugh jai vigyan <laughs> <laughs>